So I think this is a topic that uh, a lot of us also will discuss and we will actually wonder sometimes. A lot of time we, we, of course, we want to eat as natural as possible. And uh, we also know the importance of taking in uh, natural food instead of uh, processed food. But nowadays, it's very hard for us to uh, avoid, which I will also share later. What is the other concern that we should have relating to even natural food or that? So I think it's important for us to have this discussion together and then let's go through it and see whether our some of our understanding on uh, this natural food, processed food, dietary supplement and also medicine is uh, correct or uh, are we aligned in terms of our uh, view on this, okay? So, <clears throat> so what, are the, what, what are actually all these items that I have pointed out? So if let's say we're referring to the natural food, right? A lot of time, uh, people don't refer it as a natural food. Some people say uh, real food. Uh, when people like encourage us to eat real food, some people encourage us to eat uh, wholesome food. But are they the same? Okay. So the moment we talk about natural food, real food, or wholesome food, uh, we, we normally will uh, think of the picture below here, right? So it's uh, very colorful, very vibrant, and then uh, they, uh, they look original, right? Okay, so this is, of course, the uh, best option in, in terms of uh, diet that we're supposed to have. So now let us talk more on the natural food. Okay, just now we throw a few terms, but let's talk about natural food as a big title. And according to the definition from the FDA, so FDA is actually the uh, Food and Drug Association okay, in US. So they give the definition natural uh, to mean that there's nothing artificial or synthetic including color additive all that has been included in or has been added to a food and will not normally expected uh, to be in that food. Uh. Okay, so that means if today we are taking in something, uh, we know that inside got artificial or synthetic things, then that means it already out from the, the category of natural food, right? So if today we try to imagine we go uh, take away, we tap out food, okay? So those food that we tap out or things that we buy outside, right? They have undergo certain uh, process as well. I mean, they cook it, they add in flavoring, they add in artificial uh, seasoning, all that. So it's no longer considered as uh, natural food as per this definition, right? And if let's say we refer to the dictionary uh, definition, natural food is basically food which has not been processed much and has not... Uh, and has not had artificial ingredient added to it. So the similarity between these two is we are very clear. So as long as there's any uh, additional thing, which is artificial being added into that food, right? is no longer um, classified as natural. So today we try to think again, how, how, how much of uh, natural food we have intake today, okay? We, we ask ourselves this question and we can flash back uh, what we have taken for our breakfast, our lunch, our dinner. Okay, I would say hardly, right? It's really hardly we can really take natural food and um, it's really a challenge nowadays. So while real food is considered synonym of natural food, okay, just now we talk about real food also, right? So basically real food and natural food is very similar. Then there's one more term that people always referring to, which is whole food. So whole food actually is even more stricter, okay? With the extra emphasis on its nature, its natural feature and also the structure, it has to remain intact. Okay, so that means today, uh, if uh, for example, guava, okay? The guava, you already cut it and you pack it and you sell to another person, okay? The vendor sell it. So it's no longer considered as a whole food because we have actually influenced the, uh, the natural structure of it. Okay, or actually you influence the natural <clears throat> feature of the food. <clears throat> so basically, um, if let's say certain uh, business or some people who are selling product tell you that they are actually whole food, we need to be very careful because whole food basically is the hardest to, uh, to remain that standard and also to make sure that it's still whole food. Okay. So I would say whole food normally will still find it in the fresh market. Uh, 
had fresh market or in a fresh uh, food section in the hypermarket. Okay. Otherwise, I would say most of the things that we have encountered nowadays, they are no longer uh, whole food or natural. Okay. So <clears throat> after we understand the, the definition and how actually this term define all this food, right? Then we ask ourselves again. Okay. Just now, probably you have flashback and think back what have taken today. But let's, let me just go through some of the sample here, which is not the local, uh, local brand that we have so that I don't offend anyone, but I do have one <laughs> item later on, which is the local brand. Okay, so uh, all this in the packaging uh, is labeled natural. So now we understand already what, how to define that particular food is natural or not. So to me, all this has been process as well, although it's uh, mentioned as natural, some they put the natural wording in part of the uh, branding. Okay, even this that you, it might seem like the original shape of the beans, right? But it has been processed, it has been added with other uh, additive, other artificial content, so it's no longer natural food also. Same goes to the bread, okay? A lot of time we thought of oh, bread is the most hygiene and also the most original food that we can find because it's made from flour, okay? But it has undergo a process, a processing as well. So that is uh, not considered as natural food also. Although uh, if you opt for the natural white one, there's a wording natural there also. So from here, <clears throat> the general guideline here is actually we can ask ourselves three questions. One, is it processed? Okay, so if let's say it's processed in any way, which we will discuss more in uh, the, the later side, what kind of processing that we have uh, in, the current, in, in, in the current technology that we have in the market and um, how, to what extent it has been processed, okay? But as long as it's processed, it's no longer natural food. Second, we can ask ourselves whether there's any added artificial, okay? If there is, even it's a small, very small, is also considered not natural food already. Number three, remain natural form. Okay, this is the hardest one. Okay, are these still natural? No, all these uh, so colorful packing, all that already tell us clearly is no longer in a natural form. It's definitely not a whole food anymore. So what, <clears throat> but we, we, we cannot avoid from this, okay? All these thing is in our life already. Okay, we have to accept it anyway. But today I will emphasize on what we should look for and what we should be careful when we choosing all this. Okay, so <clears throat> now when we know that natural food is of course the best, don't get me wrong. Nah. Today I'm not telling you guys or oh, just go for processed food or that. Okay, we still need to be very clear that we know and we advocate the importance of natural food. Okay, of course that's the best. So on the left-hand side here, you can see a uh, natural food diet. Of course, it's the best one, okay? The most natural and probably the nutrition is uh, the, the highest, not being affected. And then probably it, it will not cause uh, additional burden to our body. It will not harm our body. It will not have uh, any side effect or whatsoever in the long term even. But are we able to eat like this uh, on a daily basis? If yes, then of course, it's very good, Okay. But even if we can eat like this uh, on a daily basis, uh, there are a few concerns in terms of uh, natural food nowadays. Okay? So we have to be aware on the global trend now. Is it still, if we just eat natural food, uh, are we still in a good position? Okay? There are a few topics that I can uh, let you guys know. So when we talk about natural food, uh, we, we, it's very hard for us to eat flavorless uh, like this on the left. So we have one first uh, issue that we might encounter is we as a human being, we all like flavors and taste, okay? So when we like flavors and taste, uh, it's very hard to uh, avoid. Sometimes we want to cook it in some flavoring. We want to season it. Uh, even like this picture showing, we want to put into a tom yum uh, steamboat or we make a curry steamboat or whatsoever. So this process of uh, preparing the food itself uh, have already uh, removed the title of natural food. It's no longer natural because we have added in the other artificial thing, okay? A lot of the flavoring nowadays is uh, artificial, okay? Even though it's a uh, tom yum, uh, I don't think they will make from the like 
original spice or that there will be uh, artificial coloring artificial preservative or that okay so second thing that we have to admit also nowadays what is the challenge of natural food okay we have to go with convenience okay it's not that we want to it's not that we don't want to eat uh, as per the left hand side it's just as because of the time our lifestyle and because of our work nature all that sometimes we opt for the convenience uh, so when we go for the convenience you can see example here the we go to the hypermarket or even if you order from the apps okay all this is like pre-prepared and uh, some even packed already earlier so all this is also considered processed already okay it's not natural food anymore okay and another important uh, topic around this natural food is there's a study okay the wording might be a bit small for you so i'll read it for you there's uh, actually one institute study on the nutrients data la, from 1975 up to 1997 so this is actually quite a number of years they collect the data and then they found that average of the calcium level in 12 uh, fresh vegetable dropped by 27 percent the iron level dropped by 37 percent vitamin a dropped by 21 percent vitamin c dropped by 30 percent okay so this is something that we will not uh, we will not know because we are not scientists we are not researcher we just buy orange as usual we just buy carrot as usual and we thought that that's the natural food and we get most nutrients out of it but that is not the case because scientists and researchers have done all this study and research paper and it has been published and showing that all this drop in the percent. Okay, so <clears throat> again, I'm not trying to tell you guys go for processed food, uh, but we have to be very careful with the natural food. Are we still getting enough nutrition with our natural food nowadays? Okay, and lastly, of course, this is not the last, but among the current issue that we have, these are the top four that I pick up. So lastly, is basically natural food nowadays come with risk. Okay, last time uh, during our grandparents' time, right? They they where do they get the fresh fruit from? Most of the time, it's like from their backyard. They have they plant themselves, or even from the farm that they know of, probably the neighbor's farm or that. So it's like really. Uh, even not organic, uh, it's very, they don't use chemical or that, okay? So it's very natural, very fresh. But nowadays, those that we buy from the hypermarket or even in the uh, Pasar Pagi, uh, okay? It comes with the risk already because of all this pesticide and the chemical that they use as the fertilizer or that. So all that will go into the natural food. So it gives us a question, uh, the moment we get the fresh item from the market itself uh, probably is not natural anymore because it might have already chemical content inside it or maybe just at the skin or whatsoever but it, if let's say it, we really follow strictly the criteria probably even that stage is no longer natural food okay so how to ensure it's natural organic planting is one of the way that uh, is really retaining the natural uh, natural way of planting okay but we hardly find a lot of organic planting item and sometimes they're also quite costly right okay so now we move further after understanding the challenge that we have with the natural food then we have to face it because nowadays it's not that uh, we, we we force ourselves to go for processed food but it's everywhere so we need to know types of the processed food that we have in the in the market and in our life and what are why we have processed food and how do we identify them and what is the uh, way to actually protect ourselves as the as the user of processed food okay so uh, we first need to know there are actually many category of uh, processed food okay and among that we are familiar so this is not the actual or professional categorization but just merely from what we can think of uh, from our daily life so first we have packed food, okay? We have canned food, and then we will have frozen food inside our fridge, okay? We will have artificial food. We will have fast, fast food when we order from the restaurant or that. We will also have a uh, snack or that, that, which is most of the time is categorized as uh, junk food, okay? So all these is actually some of the familiar processed food that we have in our life. 
And number three, minimally, uh, whether that processed food, uh, is it minimally processed or is ultra processed? It will also make a, a big difference in our choice. Okay, so we have to be aware. <clears throat> and on top of that, there are also supplementation and also medicine that we will talk about uh, tonight. Of course, supplementation and medicine, you will fall under processed food. Uh, because we know very clear the criteria of it. Uh, is, it will be ridiculous if today I tell you supplementation is a, is a natural food, uh, okay? Because it has been processed, okay? Same goes to uh, medicine. And we will talk more detail and in-depth later. And supplementation could be fully synthetic or it could be from the natural food source, okay? So this is something that we need to bear in mind first before we go further later. Okay, now we talk about the processed food. Okay, this is a very good diagram that I found in uh, one of the research paper uh, done by the uh, researcher. So this is the how they actually segregate the current in the industry of processed food. Uh, what, what are the types and uh, by nature of the change, pace of their processing, purpose of the processing. Okay, but we won't go this diagram in detail, but I have got some very important information from this diagram itself. So you can see actually, the reason of processing processed food, we need to understand first, okay? The start of having a processed food in human history uh, is basically the first reason is com for convenience, okay? Because last time before we use all this artificial coloring, preservative, flavoring, all that, right? Before all this exists, right? The most uh, conventional way of processing a food is basically they, they cut it so that it is easier for deliver, they pack it so that it's easier for them to sell, they need to cut it so that they can weigh it so that they can uh, standardize the selling all that. So it also uh, easier for the end user who, who use it. So the first um, reason of processed food is basically convenience. And even up to today, there's a lot of uh, product out there is for this purpose, okay? So you, let's say it meets this purpose, actually it's a good sign because uh, it actually helps us. And second is for economic benefits. Uh, this is where it start to uh, become a bit tricky, okay? It could be for good purpose or it could be for bad purpose, okay? So for processed food, if let's say for good purpose, right, is for economic benefits, they anyhow have to process that particular food in order for, for it to reach certain part of the world, like certain crops or certain agriculture is not exist in Malaysia, we need to import it from other country. So in order to make sure that it can reach here uh, in a good condition, it somehow has to be processed in certain way. So, so that is actually one of the good reason of uh, economic benefit as a whole globally or what. Okay, but when we talk about uh, the, the downside of it, the bad side of uh, economic benefits, then those industries start to think of uh, the way actually to uh, decrease the yield, uh, increase the yield, but actually don't care about the nu nu nutrition value. They uh, focus on mass production. They focus on genetic modified the crops, all that, so that it grow faster, all that, and is more resistant to uh, pesticide, more resistant to the nature uh, bugs, all that. So all that is also for economic reason, because the company want to ensure their product um, grow faster to meet the demand. And then another reason where they will actually become bad is that they try to make the product stay on the shelf as long as they can, okay? So that is the, 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 the purpose of coming up with preservative and also um, other way of processing the food so that it meets the, the shelf life and eventually uh, get them to the economic benefits. And then lastly, which is also um, not so good, I will say, because if let's say this particular product is processed in order to market better, okay, then it will actually lead to the economic uh, benefit sites as well. So some of the item actually, they, they don't have to process, but they do process it so that they can pack it nicely and then they can do a very nice label that is what we call as marketing. So uh, these are the three main reasons a particular food being processed. Okay, I would say it's not all, but this is the top three reason. 
So if you understand the reason of processed food, we will be able today, if let's say we take something from the shelf of the hypermarket and we look at the item and then we ask ourselves this question, is it for convenience? Is it for economic benefit or is it for marketing? Okay. And then we ourselves, we can do further evaluation. So when we look at all these processed food that we have in our daily life, we need to be smart and know how to do the evaluation because we don't want to go into the trap of the economic benefits because of the marketing or a very nice packaging, uh, then we go for it. No, okay. We have to first know what is the nutrition value. This is important. So today, uh, if let's say you have two processed food, how to actually compare which is good by looking which have the better uh, design on their packaging? No, right? That is too surface, okay? We have to go deep into what is the content of that particular item, right? So this is definitely uh, the first criteria if you ask me. And then second is the details transparency, okay? If let's say today a particular product you pick up, what well, is like didn't label anything, just tell you that this is actually a coconut candy, okay? And then they didn't tell you where is it from, they didn't tell you who manufactured it, just say bottom Malaysia or that. So we have to scrutinize, okay, the transparency of the details that they disclose on this processed food. Any processed food, I would say we have to be extra careful because if let's say they didn't disclose, it's not enough, are we comfortable with that risk, okay? We are the one who will take the risk. So it's on your hand, okay? I can't decide for you today, but I can share what are we supposed to look for. And then the third evaluation we have to do is about safety, okay? Even if they disclose something, is it safe? Is this company really uh, uh, have long history already in producing this candy or is it just uh, some unknown company that just start up and then you also don't know whether they practice safety uh, manufacturing practice, okay? So this is the question that we need to ask. Safety also comes in terms of uh, whether they use good ingredient, whether they use a good uh, flavoring seasoning, are they using a natural one or they are using a artificial one, okay? So what kind of process technique that we have? Just now we talk about what types of processed food, right? So technique also we need to roughly know la, so that we know uh, why that particular uh, processed food is in our house today, okay? So first uh, is actually in terms of preservation, okay? We use, we process that food for the purpose of preservation. Okay, so this will actually help the economic benefits. Huh? Just now we, we rank that top three reason, right? So preservative definitely relating to the economic benefits. So what is the technique that we have in the market now? First is frozen and then we can can it because can it, you basically uh, vacuum it as well. And then pasteurization is like for milk, those they're using the high temperature, high uh, or short uh, or high heat, uh, freezing, adding additive, uh, preservative, fermentation, vacuum, and also GMO to make sure uh, it actually lasts longer, okay? So these are the, as the technique that we have la, that we know of. La. And edibility, when we talk about edibility, that means uh, this food needs to be processed so that it's safer for us to consume or is uh, easier for us to uh, eat, okay? That is what it means by edibility. Okay, so again, pasteurization is important because uh, certain milk, if let's say we didn't do pasteurization properly, it could have uh, some bad bacteria inside. So it will cause uh, actually health risk to ourselves also. So we need to understand the reason of uh, why this processing is happening, okay? So if we understand it, not necessary all processed food is, uh, is, a, is a big no, okay? We need to evaluate. So <clears throat> heat, they use heat to uh, kill the germ or that. Distillation, this is for oil, uh, oil product, okay, or fat related product. They use distillation to make it pure so that there is no other foreign uh, item or foreign uh, substance inside. Filtration for like beverage, drinks, all that. Disinfection and also removal. So removal includes some physical removal as well, like uh, probably the skin is, um, it is not no nutrition value or probably the skin uh, coated with pesticide already. So they need to remove it, process it so that it's edible to us, okay? 
And then another reason is for safety. Okay, so when we talk about safety, this food needs to process in this way so that it's safety. Um, they do sampling, they do testing, they do packing, and also uh, in terms of how they deliver it. All this is also part of the process. Okay, so just some uh, few fun facts to share with you guys. Okay, so you'll notice uh, the when I say when we say processed food, we think of all those uh, artificial, those pack packaging nicely one. But like I said just now, even our natural food that we think is natural, it has been processed in a way like they have already changed the genetic. They have actually uh, crossbreed it. They have hybrid it so that it becomes like this today. So this is like our uh, corn now. Okay, but actually their ancestor look like this. Okay, so is the U is very low. If I say today we're still planting this kind of corn, uh, then it will not fulfill the mankind demand globally. Okay, so even same goes to uh, another fun fact about uh, crop is uh, tomato. So tomato also, those that we found in the hypermarket, if you buy and you put at your house, uh, nowadays if you put in your cabinet, it can last 30, 40 days. It will not rot, it will not rot one. Okay, but ordinary uh, without GMO tomato, you put there, probably 20 days, you'll see the difference already. Okay, or some even one week, you start to see uh, some very wrinkled skin already. Uh, so <clears throat> try not to look for those very shiny, very nice ones because those are the uh, GMO product. But of course, if you can accept the risk of GMO, then go ahead. But today is just sharing the awareness. Okay, so healthy processed food, is it possible? Okay, so this is a big question and also a lot of time, People always say, as if it's processed, then there's no, no, it's impossible, it's healthy. Uh. So is that true? Uh? So actually, I will still refer to this uh, three evaluation factor that I shared with you guys just now. Nutritional value, is it still have a good nutritional value? Is it disclosing what is supposed to disclose the detail? And is it 100% safe to us? So if we ask this question, we perform the evaluation, then we will know whether we can have a healthy processed food. Okay, so nutritional value depends on our basic nutrition knowledge. Huh? Okay, so today, if you, you read, even if you read the label, but you don't know anything about nutrition, then it might not be helpful as well. So if today we, we come learn together and then some, sometimes we also attend other meetings to equip ourselves with enough nutrition knowledge. It will help us in our daily life as well. Because when we look at all these items, we know whether they are, they are fooling us or not. Okay, because like some of the mixed fruit juice uh, that pack in the hypermarket, you will feel very funny when you look at the label because it's impossible that they tell you it's a tropical mixed fruit, but when you look at the label, it's only vitamin C. Impossible. Okay, so number two, transparency depends on our scrutiny on the disclosure as well. So like I said, just now, if let's say, they disclose limited information and detail. We are the one who will, will make the call, whether we accept that as it is, or we will actually scrutinize it because every product in the market now, we can easily find a substitute, right? Like today you look for, a, you, you, you look for a, for example, cereal, okay? On the cereal section, so many brands, so many other company, okay? So are we comparing the attractiveness of the box or are we really reading the calorie, we're reading the nutrition value, we look at where it's manufactured, okay, we look at uh, what is the ingredient being used, is it a lot of artificial, a lot of concentrated thing, okay, so <clears throat> those are, we have to scrutin scrutinize, uh, okay, every product priced differently for a reason, okay, and lastly, when we talk about safety, uh, how do we know whether it's safe? Okay, even though they tell us what well, is hundred percent natural, hundred percent safe. Okay, but how do we want to like also scrutinize that? It depends on how well we know about the the reputation. Okay, when we talk about reputation, is whether that brand had exist a uh, long time, whether it has been recognized by the consumer. Okay, and also more important is whether there's a third party to actually certify or justify that. That will be best. Okay. So if I say this is just a guideline for us to actually see okay, whether this processed food pass the, our evaluation. Okay? Because like I say, we cannot run away from processed food nowadays. It's quite hard. Okay? So what we can do is actually to be a smart one to choose. 
And now we move into the supplementation topic and also medication. So uh, we move to this is because these two fall under uh, processed food as well. So there are actually many difference between these two. And I want to take this uh, tonight opportunity to clear that confusion, to clear that uh, uncertainties in our, in our mind, if let's say we still confused about these two. Okay, because it's important, uh, especially when we share nutrient with others, we share supplementation with others. We ourselves, if we also confuse about medication and supplement, uh, then it's very hard for us to do that sharing already. So I just want to share some very critical differences here. So medicine and also supplements, what are the different? Firstly, we have to know medicine is for treatment, okay? And supplementation mainly is for preventive and is actually to uh, make us to reach the optimal health, okay? That's the concept of these two things. And next, medicine is actually synthetic. Same goes with supplements, but supplements, we can also uh, found some natural source supplements in the market. Okay, so for example, Nutri is uh, actually using major of uh, natural source ingredient. And number three, medicine, most of the time, need prescription from the professional like doctors and also uh, medical consultant. And certain of the medicine, which is uh, listed uh, and approved by the, our pharmaceutical agency, uh, certain is no need. Okay? But for supplements, basically, we don't, it's not required. You don't need any prescription from a doctor. But sometimes when we share about supplementation with our friends, right, they say, oh, let me ask my doctor first. Okay? So we often heard that kind of response, right? So no wrong with that. Uh, it's good that they can actually check with their doctor. If let's say I put an asterisk here, it's because like people who have a precondition, they have high blood pressure, they have diabetes, all that, they worry. Okay, so it's good that they can actually check with their doctor. But if let's say today we are just a normal, we don't have any complication, there's uh, I would say there's no need to check with your doctor. <laughs> okay, because supplementation, like I said, is not meant for treatment. Okay, it will not. Uh, have additional function other than provide our body with this preventive and also optimal purpose. Okay, and then uh, bear in mind, medicine always come with the side effects. Okay, that is the reason why uh, we try not to take medicine if uh, unnecessary. But if let's say we fall sick very uh, serious or all that, we have to seek doctor advice and then undergo the treatment, right? Okay, but of course, all um, medication and drugs will also come with side effects. So for supplement, uh, supplements, it's very rare. Okay, why is very rare? Because all the things and the nutrients inside supplements uh, is basically what we found in the food as well. So let's, unless, let's say today we eat certain real food and we have a, a, a side effect from that, then it will happen the same if you intake supplementation which has, which has the same content of that natural food. Otherwise, it's really rare, okay? And then for medicine, it's, uh, it's strictly governed, okay? In Malaysia, it's governed by uh, Ministry of Health. And then uh, for US, it's uh, FDA. We often heard about this FDA thing. It has to be SDA approved, okay? For supplement, how about supplementation? In Malaysia, it's governed by uh, this NPRA. NPRA is our, natu our national uh, pharmaceutical uh, regulatory agency. Okay, is uh, in PJ, if you notice, okay, their office is in PJ one, near the Jaya one there. Okay, so this office and this agency are uh, basically is help us to regulate all the supplements that market legally, properly in Malaysia. Okay, so any product that claim they are supplements, but they don't have this MPRA approval, don't take it because it is not approved, it's not safe, there's no testing done, all that. Okay, so of course, in uh, other country, uh, taking US example here, it has to be FDA approved as well. So if you ask me, medic medicine and also supplementation, they also undergo a very strict and very stringent uh, regulatory approvals. So in another words, um, actually they have run through the test for us. Okay, so we but then we still we need to uh, know the differences here. Lah, okay, so. Uh, a lot of people will have confusion is because of the outlook of it. Okay, so from this picture here, you will say, oh, the left and the right is also both uh, medicine pill. Okay, 
So this is also why I uh, encountered earlier, lah, okay, when I just introduced uh, supplementation to my parents, they, they always refer this as uh, the, 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 the pill, the, medic, the medicine pill. Okay? I haven't taken my medicine pill, but I keep telling them this is supplementation. Okay? <laughs> so it needs time for us to adjust that kind of mindset because of the outlook, I would say. Okay? If you look at this outlook, uh, it's like, oh, both also tablet, both are uh, medicine, but actually it's not. So for uh, medicine, is uh, the common one that we encounter day to day. Uh, it's like Panadol is also, but Panadol don't require a uh, prescription. Uh, we can buy it easily from the convenience shop, all that. So we also have diabetic pills, high blood pressure pills, cholesterol pills, and etc. Those are what we call as medicine. Okay. So they how this medicine work, uh, also tablet, but the moment we eat into our body, uh, it's totally different mechanism and different function. Okay. So for medication, when we consume it into our body, they control our body internal switches. Okay, so inside our body got many switch, okay? Okay, uh, switch that control our hormones, switch that control our enzyme, switch that control our liver detoxification, our liver processes, all that. So <clears throat> these drugs and also this medication is designed to take over those switches and control our body. So for example, like diabetic, when we intake the, the, the pill, you will actually control the switch of our insulin or that, okay? So this is how drugs and medication work to influence our body mechanism. Now, when we look at uh, supplement, it's totally different, okay? Supplement, the common that we know of is vitamin C, fish oil, multivitamin, multimineral, calcium, milk tester, uh, coenzyme Q10, etc. okay? But we have to aware they provide me, they, provide material to our body internal process to ensure we achieve the optimal process, okay? In other words, it's just like food, okay? Today we intake food, it's also to provide our body material to do all this internal process, okay? You will not catch out your switch, you will not uh, make your body to regulate certain more which more hormone or create more enzyme of which or to control certain process, no. Okay, just like normal food, but then it's a concentrated form that actually provide the material to target for a particular uh, body optimal process. Okay, so that is the difference. And now we will talk about Nutrilite, of course. Okay, so uh, I, after we know that actually supplementation is fall under the processed uh, food, we need to know whether Nutrilite is a good option. Okay, If you ask me, definitely I'll say Nutrilite is the best option, but for a reason, not just blindly telling you that Nutrilite is the best, or uh, although Nutrilite is number one world selling uh, supplementation, Okay, but we need to know the reason behind it. So first of all, if you still remember the three criteria just now, I will not run from that three criteria, same thing. First, whether the nutritional value and also the disclosure is being done properly. So on your right-hand side, this is basically uh, our double X and I just cropped the phytonutrients part because this is the most uh, amazing part that I will share because a lot of products that claims that they have phytonutrients on that, but they're not able to break down like this, okay? This is double X and they are breaking down each plant, what kind of plant, how many milligram and what is the extract. Okay, even go up to the, the extent whether, for example, apple, is it the leaf of the apple, the root of the apple, or the fruits of the apple? This is how detailed Nutrilite can go to. So Nutrilite always provide all details and use and, and end user needs. Okay, and then second, they go extra mile in disclosing more what is being required by the FDA. Like I mentioned just now, you don't have to tell whether it's from the leaf. Like for example, on the right hand side, you see the, the item number five, right? color it says it's from the leaf okay you don't have to fda don't require you to do that okay even malaysia and pra also don't require you to do that but we go up to the extent and that's what we why i res respect uh nutrient so much and disclosure that a person who has nutrition knowledge would appreciate like so that's why it's very important for us to have this knowledge if let's say today we are not a person who is nutrition literate or we are not exposed to nutrition at all, we will feel that wow, all this wording is like too much for me, okay? They will not appreciate this. But for people who actually know about nutrition and they appreciate this kind of uh, disclosure, 
it's a very good bonus advantage for us to share this kind of uh, this brand with other friends. Okay, because in the market, I would say, if you refer to any competitors or other uh, similar range of uh, product, they don't have this kind of disclosure. Okay, so when we talk about uh, Nutrilite, Nutrilite and also supplementation, we also want to ask ourselves one thing which is very important, uh, where this food coming from? Okay, so the origin of the food is very important. We know that it's a process, but where is the origin coming from? So I give you a very simple example that I heard from uh, one sharing previously, which I think is very good. It just gives a very simple example that we might encounter sometime in life or so. So it, it, it asks us on the floor, one is on the floor, one is in the shop, which one will you opt for? Okay, maybe it's too uh, abstract for you, but let me put it into picture. So today on the floor, you saw this uh, Mentos. We all know what is Mentos. Okay, we know this brand. But if you found it on the floor like this, right, will you give it to your kids? Okay, you can respond by saying yes in the chat or no in the chat. Okay, but I believe a normal or a, a sane person will actually say no, right? Okay. Not because we don't know Mentos, okay? not because we don't know this is candy. We are also quite certain this is candy, right? But we don't know the origin of it. And some more is like open already, okay? We don't know, is it bite by an animal half or is it bite by another previous person who has COVID, okay? So it's, we don't know when there's so many uncertainty and unknown, right? It becomes a risk to us and that actually poses a question mark in safety, okay? And today, if let's say I tell you, right hand side, you go in this shop, you saw also Mentos, and you feel like uh, try to reward your kids for uh, doing good in the re uh, exam or whatsoever, will you buy it? Will you buy this? Okay, you will, you will definitely get this, right? Okay, you feel safer, right, to get from the right hand side. Okay, so that actually explains the origin of the food is very important. So today, same, A and B also process food, but which one actually disclose most on the origin of the ingredient that it use is important. So that is the reason why Nutrilite always emphasize on this uh, trademark that we have, which is traceability. This is one of the things that we promote the most and one of the things that actually dis distinguish Nutrilite from other brands the most also. I can tell you if today you go to any other brand who also, or, or even other direct selling company, sorry to say, they will not be able to produce this kind of traceability. So when we talk about traceability, let me go through with you how detailed Mway can, uh, Nutrient can go into. Okay, so the, the, the traceability concept is basically to let us all as an end user uh, know, okay, we have the right to know and is their commitment to show us things that we're supposed to know, okay? And then second, is food safety risk is real, okay? The reason why they uh, promote this is because they know that currently um, in the market, so many food safety issues, okay? So our best defense is actually, we ourselves get to know the product, okay? And then, <clears throat> but in order for us to know the product, we need to read the disclosure on the label or so ever. Okay, so this is what Nutrilite try their best to disclose to us. So uh, they also mentioned that food adulteration. So uh, adulteration here means uh, certain food, they process it to actually reduce the, the nutrition value inside the food. Okay, there is such thing in the market. Okay, uh, fraud and also safety violation are on the rise. Okay, so we have the right to transparency that actually help us to have knowledgeable nutrition choice. So Nutrilite traceability actually uh, give us all that, okay? And it ensures three things, three things that they emphasize. The origin of the ingredient is pure, the origin of the ingredient is safe, and they remain effective. Uh, that is why we want to put, that is why when we feel worth to spend on Nutrilite because it ensures these three things which is already more than enough. Okay, just like the mentors on the floor, if they, they didn't give you that kind of assurance, you will not definitely give to, to your family. So product with the birth certificate also. 
So what kind of product actually give you uh, such a good coverage, right? So we focus on uh, traceability, focus on purity, safety, effective, okay? So in these three areas, how they actually uh, ensure to achieve it, there's a, there's a benchmark and there's a test being done for that, not just a slogan, okay? So for purity, they undergo all this testing for the nutrient product. They test uh, in the nutrient labs, they, they test the botanical identity of the ingredients, uh, make sure there's non-GMO so we can very uh, safely consume the product which there's no GMO physical uh, appearance, raw material amount and identity, no artificial, no uh, preservative, all that. They undergo all this, have to pass all this, okay? To ensure neutral product is pure. Second, how to ensure neutral product is safe? They also undergo all these tests, okay? No pesticide on the botanic, okay? So today you might say, oh, our supplement is natural source. So it could be from the natural food, also uh, use pesticide, all that. So don't have to worry because we test that, okay? We ensure that farms that cooperate with us also not using pesticide. So safe, no heavy metals, which is uh, very harmful to our nerve system. And we is quite worried actually. Now it, uh, heavy metal is everywhere. It's in, even in our water source. So do use a good water treatment as system as well. And coliform, all these uh, bacteria, viruses, fungi, yeast, mold, and they also perform X-ray for the metal detection. For all the packed product, you undergo X-ray to ensure there's no foreign substance or uh, metal inside. So this is how they ensure the safety of the product. And lastly, when they say effectiveness, today if you spend 10 ringgit for the same product, but they tell you uh, they, did, they cannot guarantee you the nutrition value is still effective, uh, will you go for that? So I would rather go for the one who tested properly. They tell you when they say inside got vitamin C, it's really got vitamin C. It passed the test of effectiveness. That means when they do in the lab test, they test it, the vitamin is still there. One. It's not that after the process, everything packed already, eh? then no more vitamin inside already oxidized or what. No. Okay. This is what they assure us in terms of the phytonutrients, mineral, the particle size. And we claim that our, our protein powder is very fine. Is it every of the particle also samely fine? Okay, they check everything, moisture level, the tablet weight, the tablet hardness, okay, whether it dissolves properly in the water, okay, tablet physical inspection, tablet count, and uh, packaging label inspection, all that. Okay, so very, very uh, comprehensive testing. Okay, and they actually conducted this kind of testing uh, half a million times okay, on an ingredient and also a product each year. Okay, and by average, uh, that will means actually 200 over times for every single product okay, in the manufacturing. And they not only confirm the raw material identity, they also confirm that it carries the required level of nutrients potency. So that is the most important thing in supplementation. We don't want to supplement our body. The, the objective is to get nutrition. But in the end, there's no nutrition inside. So they can assure the nutrients potency that is very important. And I would say uh, really assuring. Uh. Okay, so for in terms of uh, traceability and safety, this is the MWA standard. They also check the radiation sterilization. They also do the x-ray that I mentioned just now to detect uh, for detection of metal and other foreign substance. So it's a strict control. Just now we mentioned half a million times per year, right, for ingredient. Same goes to our raw material, also half a million times per year, do this kind of random testing and they undergo all this analysis. Okay, so it's a very, very stringent process. And here also they, they do shock proof test, they do temperature test. So Nutrilite want to ensure uh, the consistency of the product quality, uh, whether the, the phytonutrients uh, or the nutrients content inside the product will be affected by this. When you deliver the product, right, you will be shaky in the shipment, you will be shaky in the flight, all that. So is it shock proof? Is it temperature proof? Okay, so they implement all this for the packaging, okay, more than 30,000 times every year, okay, they consistently test to ensure whenever um, there's new product or even, even existing product to ensure its consistency, okay. And traceability is also uh, applicable to this brand because we really can claim traceability at its best because 
uh, Nutri is the only brand that we have our own organic farm to source for the ingredients and the botanical that we use in our supplementation. So these are the four farms that we have in United States. Uh, we have in Mexico, Trout Lake, Trout Lake uh, West East, and also uh, Brazil. Okay, so it's over uh, 6,000 acre big. So we also cooperate with other uh, certified nutri uh, organic farm around the world to cooperate with us and supplies the ingredient that meet all the standard and all the safety uh, guidelines that I mentioned just now. Uh, and this is actually additional information to share with you guys to let we all understand why organic farming. Because organic farming is the one that actually that prevent the loss of nutrition the most, the, the best, okay? In the earlier sharing, right, I told you guys, okay, the nutrition, they undergo the research, they say uh, vitamin C drop by 30%, mineral all that drop 20 to 30%. So from this research itself, it's also show that by organic farming, uh, it can actually remain most of the uh, phytonutrients and also the health benefit of the flavonoid inside the natural food itself, okay? So you can see it's really different. Uh, and in traceability, they emphasize on each of the steps, what are the things that they're concerned of. So step one is uh, choosing the right botanical to produce the right product. And step two, to select the seed, even the seed, they select the quality seed to plant in our farm to make sure the, the, the crops is the best one and choosing the farm, okay? Like I said, the four of our Nutridite own uh, organic farm no longer able to meet the demand of the global, okay? So that's why we cooperate with a lot of other organic farm as well that meet the nutri -cert criteria. So we, we get to choose, okay? Which are the farm that actually can work well with Nutrilite and they can meet our criteria also to provide quality and growing. And every particular crop, crop step four is uh, to grow the crop and to give them a birth certificate and they able to track each of the crop, okay? And harvesting. Uh, so it harvests actually, the harvest process, uh, they emphasize on the speed, okay? So it actually take as little as 20 minutes from the field of the farm to the processing plant, okay? This is actually to ensure the minimal nutrition loss. And if uh, they can actually achieve that, they can ensure that the, the crop yield is uh, protected. Okay, so extracting, uh, then you will go into process. So that is the start of when it becomes a processed food, okay, become a supplementation. So it uh, actually to preserve. Okay, so if we ask our, uh, ourselves a question again, okay, three reasons of processed food, convenience, economic benefits, number three, marketing. Okay, so for Nutrilite, I think it meets all these three criteria in a good way, okay, because uh, when it's attract, uh, when it's extracting, they also undergo certain process and technology, which I will share later. Okay, to preserve the freshness and also the nutrition value of it. Second, of course, is for economic benefits. Okay, is it, it it need to meet economy of scale to market around the world. Okay, Amway is a global company, so they definitely need to protect the margin so that they can continue to supply sufficiently to through the world. Okay. And number seven, manufacturing, okay? We analyze each of the product. Then we start to manufacture the, the supplements, right? And they analyze and they do quality check, all that, okay? 200 times. And packaging, make true packaging keeps uh, our product safe. They also very detailed in terms of labeling, packaging. Uh, just now I have shown, I don't want to uh, re-emphasize again. So lastly, when the product reaches, right? We know how they are being made. We know the process of it, it has undergo. Is it from a reliable source, the origins of the ingredients? So that actually gives us a peace of mind, okay? So from here, you can also, I can also share a little bit on the technology that they use in terms of uh, extracting the phytonutrients, which is one of the important uh, things that we have in Double X also and some other uh, nutrient product also. So, in order to get the phytonutrients, right, the step one is actually dehydrate the crops, okay? And then step two, they'll actually grind it and then they'll actually extract the best part of the phyto and then they'll separate it from the fiber, okay? Because fiber is uh, none other than carbs, uh, okay? Uh, 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 fiber forms of carbohydrate.
but we just want to extract the flavonoid, which is actually the phytonutrients, uh, the good content. Okay, so then we move to the, make it into become a concentrate. So when it become a concentrate, it's uh, in a very thick liquid form, and then they remove the water to make it even concentrated, and then you, there will be a machine to actually spray it and dry it so that it become, remove the water, and then it becomes like a concentrated powder. Okay, and then this is a new technology that they use. They actually retain the nutrients uh, which will normally lost during a heat process. So this is how they do it. They actually pour the concentrate on the metal plate and um, uh, using uh, hot water to circulate uh, beneath it. So that actually will retain the nutrition, value, the nutrition benefit. And at the same time, they're able to process it effectively. Okay, and able to preserve it uh, nicely. So these are a very complex process, you see. So today, if let's say we, we tell ourselves we want to go for natural food, okay, today you buy the fresh fruit from the market, are you able to like cut, grind like this and then dehydrate like this in a very controlled and hygiene environment? No, right? I think today we are paying a good price for this kind of process to get the best supplementation for our life. Okay, so I will not go into detail on this. These are just some example how they process our uh, salmon omega as well. You will see it's very complex process. They also emphasize on every stage also how they actually, I think you, if you will notice one thing is they always want to ensure they protect the nutrition value of the things that protect, uh, that they produce. That is already enough for us as an end user to know. Okay, so like fish oil, you say, uh, you can see they include purposely include a vitamin E to make sure it will become an antioxidant and make sure the oil will not uh, go bad. Okay, so this is like tablet also, they tell you how they produce the tablet, okay? okay. So here, we uh, let us watch a simple video together. A dedicated building on Amway's Ada, Michigan campus is where the company produces its worldwide supply of Neutralite all-plant protein. It's a big undertaking, which began in 2013 with a $24 million investment. The protein-rich powder is made up of a tri-blend of soy, wheat, and peas, which is dairy-free, lactose-free, and cholesterol-free. Amway takes quality very seriously, so the manufacturing process is secured with multiple checks and balances to ensure the product is of the highest quality possible. The process begins with large bags of soy, weighing over 500 kilograms. Machine operator Dante Aker explains what happens next. Well, this is our blending operation up here where we mix all the powders up, blend them up. When we do the soy, we pull it from our bulk transfer system, which is located on the first floor, and it comes all the way up to the third floor. And here is where we throw all the other bags that go in there, where we throw our pea protein and wheat. Jackie Parsons, a technician on the protein line, notes key elements of quality checks performed throughout the process. The X-ray machine is one of our critical control points, and it uh, picks up anything that could be possibly in the can to keep the product safe for customers. It stands for ferrous and non-ferrous metals, glass and plastic. We always send out the best product because this is what represents Amway, and we put our hearts and everything into making quality product to help ensure that the ABOs have the best product possible. Manufacturing tech Craig Svalen works to ensure the line runs quickly and smoothly. After the all-plant protein is filled, Svalen focuses much of his attention on the look of the container. Each country has its own label, uh, so you got to make sure that you have the, the correct artwork. We're busy all the time with the APP canisters, so it's, uh, it's uh, definitely a good selling product. In Ada, Chris Copes, WHQ News. Yeah, so this is just one example of the of the one product of Nutrilite, our our protein. So you can see how many process they have undergo and also how careful are they when they uh, want to ensure the safety and then the quality of it, how they actually detect all that. Okay, so those are the official uh, video from Mway, and then also. Uh, just now what I share with you is on the traceability is also from the Nutrilite website. If you notice, uh, also put the link at the below. So now I'm going to share with you what we see with our own eyes. Okay. Because in uh, 2015, 
uh, we get a chance to actually visit uh, Nutrilite uh, Health Institute in US. And we actually see with our own eyes how they actually practice, how they actually uh, manufacture all these things. And then uh, this is actually the HQ for uh, NHI. Okay, so it's in uh, California, US. And it's an exclusive tour by uh, AL, uh, ALS qualifier ABO. Okay, so that time you can see uh, there's so many ABO. We visit that institute. Okay, this is uh, some of the picture that I took during the tour. Okay, so <clears throat> just to let you guys see what is uh, actually inside uh, our Nutrilite Institute there. So uh, this is some of the picture inside when we enter the institute. Uh, so we are required to wear a very uh, strict, uh, also we need to wear all this covered to make sure that when we go into the production and also the warehouse later on, you will not, not uh, contaminate the environment and also the ingredient that they, they place there. Okay, so <clears throat> we are getting ready. So we are given the uh, earphone. There, there's, there's a special tour guide to actually guide us around all the APO that went there uh, that time. So uh, the third picture is basically the ingredient warehouse. It's a very, very huge area whereby it's a very high rack also. That is the place where they actually control. They have a controlled room and then uh, they control the temperature. They control, they control the moisture level, all that. That is the place where they store the ingredients of it and we get to see with our own eyes how they actually protect our ingredients and uh, this is really an amazing uh, process okay and then uh, we get to play around with all these things that they have in the institute we get to experience how the scientists uh, what they look at and what how they weigh all these things when they do the lab test okay so <clears throat> some some interesting thing that i noticed when we visit there right also, we noticed that Nutra is not actually emphasizing on their production only, okay? It's a company that actually they emphasize on environmental. If we know and we understand Mway, right, it's a company that really want to play a role in protecting environment as well. So you can see here, they also put extensive study on the farm ecosystem. They understand the entire farm ecosystem, including the nature surrounding the farm. So that is the reason why you can see oh, there's so many uh, insect sample here that they actually study what are the differences and how they actually uh, affect the ecosystem in the farm. Okay, And on the right-hand side is the worm that actually uh, Neutralite use in their Mexico farm. So it's actually a live red Egyptian worms that we can see on the spot. They put the live one so that we can sample and see ourselves because we have often heard that these uh, worms that are being used by Nutrilite uh, is a special species whereby it can grow up to six inch long. Uh. So we get to see with our own eye is really a, a big size uh, worm, okay? So by visiting the institute, right, we also assure ourselves and also get more confidence because um, we get to see all these patterns that we always claim that Nutrilite uh, have the most pattern in the market, all that. But you get to see all these patterns hang on the wall of uh, Nutrilite Institute, more than 190 uh, granted and also pending patterns that we have. And also we get to see the, the, the real diagram of how the manufacturing process, other than those that we saw in the website that I have shown you just now. So you get to see also in the Institute itself. And these are some of the... Uh, the, the room signage that I managed to snap that time is not all because if I want to put out all, uh, it's a lot. But here, I just want to let you guys know uh, there is really so many lab room. Uh, it's a very huge institute. Uh, inside the institute, there's so many testing and also analysis lab that actually contribute to the quality assurance. So you can see all this is under the quality assurance department whereby they test the mineral, they trace and analyze the nutrition value inside. They analyze the vitamin inside, they analyze even the microbiology media preparation, all that. Okay, so these are just few of the left signage that I, I, I put here. Okay, there's a lot. Okay, and then uh, this is some of the lab whereby there's a transparent glass that we managed to snap inside what is uh, uh, the, the, the condition inside. You can see the lab is very clean, shiny, if you notice the floor. So that is how strict they actually uh, undergo all these tests you see with your own eyes uh, because just now when i tell you uh, they are very careful they are very strict they, are, they perform audit but when you see with your own eyes you really understand we really practice the best okay 
So during that visit, right, we are also being informed. Okay, on the right hand side here, I have put in. Okay, actually, they told us uh, Nutrilite um, always are the one that the US FDA chose to uh, audit and also uh, pay the uh, visit for inspection normally. They are the first company that they will go to. Okay, why they tell us is because it helps those FDA agency uh, to set the standard for other manufacturers for other manufacturer that they will visit later on. Because by visiting Nutrilite, they already know what the standard can be this high. So when they go for other manufacturer, they know how to actually advise them for improvement. They know where to spot the weaknesses, all that. So to me, it's actually very proud to know this fact. Uh, actually, um, as a Nutrilite user, we should also be proud because we are using a brand where it's a benchmark for others same industrial uh, practitioner, okay? So this is how um, great the, the, the standard we are setting for Nutrilite, okay? So <clears throat> we also, uh, this is a picture that we also took. Uh, we went for the, to the production line department and then we found that there's a one, so happened that day they are producing one uh, batch which is for Malaysia and the Bio C plus, okay? So we take a photo and uh, become a, a memory Okay, so that is a production line of BioC Plus for Malaysia in US. But by looking at that production line, it actually gives us a lot of feeling, you see, because the feeling of actually witnessing the process of seeds to supplement, because seeds to supplement is like a slogan, okay? We thought that, okay, it's a very nice slogan for Nutrilite, all that. But when you see it being produced to the finished product, and when we visit the institute, right, we undergo the process, where is the ingredient, how they process it, uh, what are the testing that they undergo. It really matched well with this slogan. It's not just a slogan for the uh, marketing purpose or what, it's really what Nutrilite practice that make us uh, proud, okay? So lastly, before I end my sharing, I just want to uh, sum up and also summarize what I shared tonight. After understanding the natural food, processed food, supplementation, and medicine, right, I'm not telling everyone to uh, starting today go for processed food. Of course, our natural food is the best, okay? But uh, I have posted here, which I can share with you guys. Even natural food nowadays easily fall under nutritional deficiency category, okay? Due to the reason that I have shared with you just now, mass production, high yield, low nutrients, GMO, expedited uh, growth, etc., Okay, and we haven't talked about the process of delivering it where we actually uh, 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 will actually uh, degrade the nutrition value also through during the delivery process or that we haven't even go into that. Okay, so end of the day, we shall be wise in, in making our food choice. Okay, be it natural or processed. Okay, as long as we have the knowledge, right, we will be able to make a wise decision. Okay, so this is I uh, I sharing uh, this particular picture that I found online. It says that today more than ninety five percent of all chronic disease is caused by the food choice that we make. Okay, the toxic food ingredient, the nutritional deficiency, and also lack of physical exercise. So today, if let's say we don't have this knowledge, even if you go for the natural food, but we always opt for the wrong one or we don't know how to choose the right one, we will be uh, nutritional uh, deficiency as well. Okay, so what is the right balance? Today, of course, I will still continue to promote uh, this suku suku separo diet plate, which we need to have at least half is uh, vegetable and fruits. That's the way the, the guideline. And then the other quarter will be our protein intake, high quality protein. The other quarter will be uh, high quality carbohydrate. When we say high quality carbohydrate, it means that try to go for the carbohydrate, which is high in fiber. That means complex carbohydrate. You can choose whole grain or you can choose multi-grain, okay? So, <clears throat> and then of course, uh, clean water, okay, for, for, for our drinks, okay? So today, if let's say we follow this suku suku sparrow, is it that means that we already ensure that we have enough or optimal nutrition uh, value? Not necessarily so. So for example, if you need vitamin, mineral, protein, uh, fibers, fat, of course, if you attend the previous session, you will know I have shared about the seven nutrition values, right? So the seven nutrition value, if you still remember, here I only listed a few. So other than fiber, fat, protein, mineral, vitamins, right? We still have carbohydrate and also uh, water, okay? So <clears throat> seven of it, but I only list uh, five here because carbohydrate never become a challenge for us <laughs> to obtain. So these are the ones that normally will pose as a challenge for us. For example, if today we take 
main source of vitamins come from fruits and vegetables. And if let's say we intake this amount, okay, and then mineral mainly from the uh, beans, uh, grains, and also seafood, and we intake, we might achieve this amount. And protein mainly from all these, okay, dairy product from our meats, okay, from uh, cheese and milk, egg, so on. Fiber and fat normally come from vegetable and fruits as well for fiber. For fats, we need to intake like a good source of fruits like avocado and also uh, seafood, salmon. Okay. So we will notice that in whole day, right, we might still have this red color gaps one. Okay. So are we always in this deficiency all the time? If let's say today we are in the deficiency, choose the right way to actually fill up this gap. Okay. You can either choose the natural food or if you choose processed food, I will highly uh, recommend Nutrilite because Nutrilite, I have told you, I have shared with you how they practice it, how they ensure they are giving us the guarantee, the nutrition value that they have promised. Okay, so for vitamin and mineral, easily you can fill up the gap using our double X and also body key. For kids also, we have multivitamin chewable. So there's no excuse for kids to be uh, nutrition deficiency. Okay, and then for protein, easily we can fill out the gap with our protein. Okay, just now I show you that video already. And for fibers and also fat, okay, we can actually supplement with our salmon omega, which is a good fatty acid, contains both DHA and also EPA. We also have uh, our fiber, which is a uh, mixed fiber. We also have the chewable one, which contain also uh, insoluble fiber. So all these are the options that we have from a very reliable source, from a product that actually can trace back to the origin, okay? So I hope the sharing tonight will be able to give you, you all a very clear picture already now, how to actually segregate natural food, processed food, uh, supplementation, also medicine, which is very important.